Uh, welcome all to this important hearing. And uh, Mr. Zeintz, Zeintz, did I get that right? I, uh, I don't envy your task today. Um, I want to welcome you. Um, you're new to the job. You got thrown into the breach. Um, you came late with respect to running OMB, to preparing this budget, um, and you've got a very tough job ahead of you. And with the departure of, of Jack, Lou, uh, you've got thrown in at the late, late moment. So I want to tell you first before I get into this, um, thank you for serving our country. Uh, you came from a successful private sector career back to government, and, and we applaud that. Uh, so I just think that that's, these things go without saying, but they're, they're, they're worth they bear repeating. <clears throat> Problem is, you're in the position of defending a budget that essentially dodges the most difficult challenges our country faces. The New York Times reported that this budget is, quote, more a platform for the president's re-election campaign than a legislative proposal, end quote. After a careful review of this budget, it's very hard to disagree with that. The Associated Press accurately, in my view, Quotes this budget as, quote, takes a pass on reining in government growth. Instead, it leaves the drivers of the debt, namely the unsustainable growth in entitlement programs, largely unchecked. It takes a pass on real reform, even though the looming bankruptcy of these programs threatens to end the guarantee of security that they provide for our nation's seniors. And it breaks the president's promise to cut the deficit in half by the end of his first term. As ABC News reported, this budget does not come close. We've heard a lot of excuses from this administration for why the president broke his promise. But what we have not heard is any semblance of accountability. To the best of my knowledge, no one in the White House has taken responsibility for this failure. Instead, we get a blame game that does not stand up to scrutiny. Jack Lew, your former, former boss, claimed that the reason the Senate Democrats haven't passed a budget in over a thousand days is because Republicans had threatened a filibuster. Look. This is simply false. We all know, as I'm sure Mr. Liu knows, that budget resolutions cannot be filibustered. They can be passed with a simple majority vote. It's that the Senate Democrats chose not to do so. The real source of dysfunction in the Senate comes from members of, his president, of the president's own party who have been unwilling for almost three years now to go on record in support of his budgets or to pass budgets of their own. More to the point. It wasn't so long ago that the President's party held total control of the White House and both branches of government, during which time the agenda was enacted in near totality. He was able to pass into law massive spending in taxes, the creation of new open-ended entitlements, a regulatory onslaught that is now hurting our economy, and trillions of dollars in new debt. Even after all of this, the new House majority provided him with an opportunity to make good on his promise to put aside the chronic avoidance of tough decisions, to use the President's words, that he once used to lament. We were and we remain eager to work with the President to stop spending money we don't have, to reform government programs that are not delivering on their promises, and to enact pro-growth policies that raise revenue by getting our economy growing again. Instead of working with us, though, the President has demonized our ideas to save and strengthen health and retirement security programs. He fought to keep his reckless spending spree growing. And he continues to insist on taking more money from hardworking Americans not to reduce the deficit, but to fuel his ever higher spending increases. The President's ongoing refusal to advance serious solutions to our nation's fiscal challenges represents a stunning dereliction of duty. We're not going to give up hope. I remain committed to working with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle wherever common ground can be reached. Some of us have been doing that. There is growing bipartisan support for reforms that are needed. But this consensus cannot succeed as long as the President of the United States remains on the outside looking in, as he does today. It's my hope that this hearing can shed some light on why this is occurring. I've just got to say, we see a debt crisis coming. We know our government is making promises to people it simply cannot keep. It is time for us to be honest with Americans about these things. Both parties got us into this mess. But this is the fourth budget from this president with a trillion dollar deficit each year, obviously a breaking of that promise, but worse yet, no credible solution to deal with our debt, to deal with this great threat to today's economy, 
and tomorrow's future for our kids. And instead, we get the politics of envy and division. Instead, we get smoke and mirrors, accounting tricks, budget gimmicks. If we're going to save this country from a debt crisis, give our kids a better future, we have to have leadership. And i got to say, I'm just very disappointed that we're not getting this from the president. With that, I look forward to questions, and I yield to the Ranking Member, Mr. Van Hollen.